Hello everyone, in today's video I'm going to be reviewing Back to the Future Part 3, the third and final installment of the Back to the Future trilogy. Back to the Future Part 3 was released on May 25th, 1990, 30 years ago. It grossed $246.1 million at the box office, and it was the highest grossing film of 1990. Back to the Future Part 3 Marty goes back to 1885 to save Doc Brown from being shot by Buford Mad Dog Tanning. Marty goes back to 1885. The DeLorean gas pump breaks, so Doc and Marty have to figure out another way to get back to 1985 without gas. Being in the Old West, there was no gas or cars and automobiles in that time. The movie was once again directed by Robert Zemeckis. He's the only director to have directed three films, and no other director has directed a Back to the Future movie. Michael J. Fox and Christopher Lloyd reprise their roles as Marty and Dr. Emmett Brown. Leah Thompson and Thomas F. Wilson play two different characters. Leah Thompson plays Maggie McFly, Marty McFly's great-grandmother, and Thomas F. Wilson plays Buford Tanning. They do play Lorraine and Biff, but not up until the end of the movie, but it's only very brief. As a kid watching this film, this was one of my favorite the Back to the Future films. But in recent years, like, giving it more rewatches, it hasn't really, uh, aged well for me. It hasn't, like, gotten any better any time I rewatch it. I mean, I don't hate the film. I'm not saying this is, like, one of the worst things of all time. It's just, uh, I find it, like, cliche, and I feel like Robert Zemeckis was just, like, getting lazy and doing the same, like, rehash format rather than trying to come up with new ideas. Robert Zemeckis uses the same format and cliches that we've seen in the last two films. I kind of get a little boring lazy at times. Here are examples, like example number one, when Marty thinks he was having a bad dream and then he wakes up realizing that it was real, that he's not really dreaming, he's really back in time. It's like the first time it was funny, the second time, okay, and the third time, boring and lazy. Example number two, when Mad Dog Tanning and his gang chases Marty on horses, a rehash from the first movie in the second film. Instead of, uh, in the first film, he was chased by cars. In the second film, he was chased by Griffin and his gang on hoverboards. In this film, he's being chased by horses. Example number three, when they go back to 1985, instead of lightning striking the clock tower, they use a train to get up to 88 miles per hour to go back to 1985. Example number four, when Doc Brown explains to Marty the planet going back to 1985, he doesn't have the models all set up a Hill Valley, and Marty's like, I don't care, just show me the plan. Example number five, Mad Dog Tanning lands in manure. For the third time, the Tannings landed in manure. There must be a tradition, it runs in the Tanning family. These cliches, deja vu, and same formats gets so boring, annoying, and lazy that it makes you lose interest in the movie when they're repeating themselves. Even though it takes place in the West, which is something different, but at the same time, it doesn't really do its best job at trying something different. Even though this is not my favorite of the trilogy, but there are some moments I do enjoy in the film that I think are okay. Like, I do like the idea they go back to the Old West. I think this concept is good. I just wish it could have been done better. In fact... If they had made more Back to the Future films without Robert Zemeckis, I would have loved to have seen like more of a film series where we saw like Marty and Doc Brown go back to different like time periods. Like for example, the Revolutionary War, the signing of the Declaration of Independence, Civil War, Lincoln's assassination, World War I, the Roaring Twenties, the Great Depression, World War II, the Korean War, the Vietnam War, and also like if they had gone back in time to figure out who was the assassinations of, like, JFK, Martin Luther King Jr., and Robert F. Kennedy. And also, it would have been cool to see him go back to, like, the Vietnam War. I like when Marty, when he goes back to 1885, he meets his great-grandparents instead of telling him his real name for obvious reasons. Because if he told them that he was Marty McFly, the great-grandson of them, they wouldn't believe him. They would think that he's weird. So instead, he uses a fake name using Clint Eastwood, the actor, which is pretty cool and awesome. 
I went back in time and met my great-grandparents, I probably would not tell them my real name for obvious reasons, because they wouldn't believe me. I probably would have just given them a fake name to tell them that I was uh, Travis Deckard. Travis, as in Travis from Taxi Driver and Deckard from Blade Runner. Let me know what you think of that fake made-up name. I like it when Marty and Doc Brown go to the town party and witness a little history seeing the uh, finish and model of the clock tower. It makes us all think how we wish we could go back to an historic moment in history to witness something like that. Come as a little bit of a surprise, the character Clara Clayton, played by Mary Steenburgen. I don't know why, despite that people consider like one of the most least likable and annoying characters in the Back to the Future series, honestly, I don't think she's not that bad as I say she is. I mean, I'm not saying she's a great character. She was okay. I just don't think she's not as bad as annoying like most other characters are. I like the chemistry between her and Dr. McBrown, how they have like so much in common of the same interests. Thomas F. Wilson does a great job as Buford Mad Dog Tanning. He is just as bully and a jerk as he is as Biff. Done cowboy style and a little more dirty than Biff. It does have some of its funny comedy moments because out of all the three, this is probably the one that used comedy the most. When he meets his great grandfather as a baby, he pees on him. Marty is set and ready to go back to 1885. He wears a stupid, ridiculous, goofy clown cowboy costume. When he walks out and tells Doc Brown, Clint Eastwood never wore anything like this. What's funny about this scene is that if you look in the background, there's two movie posters. One, Revenge of the Creature, and two, Tarantula. Both of those films came out in 1955, and those were Clint Eastwood's first early film roles. Before he was a big movie star. The Hill Valley Town Party. He runs into his great-grandparents. He eats the last pie, and he says, Frisbee. Then he walks away, and Seamus McFly says, What was that all about? Because he didn't understand like what frisbees. Well, then again, I guess frisbees were not a thing back then. I wouldn't know when frisbees were invented. He shoots the fake wooden cowboys at the fair. The uh, guy asks him, "Where did you learn to shoot like that?" And Marty's response is, "7 <laughs> Eleven. No such thing as 7 Eleven back in 1885. They had the saloons." When Doc Brown sees the photo that Marty took back in 1955 of his tombstone. He sees that his name has disappeared, and a mortician is measuring Marty's body for his coffin, just in case if he does die and gets shot by Buford Tanning, to be prepared. Marty realizes that if he gets shot by Buford Tanning, his name will be on the coffin instead of Doc's. About this, this is the only time in this series where Doc Brown and Marty say their famous catchphrase lines in reverse. Marty says, Great Scott, and Doc Brown says, This is heavy. After being heartbroken and dumped by Claire for telling the truth about how that he's from the future and she doesn't believe him, he goes to the saloon, he stays there all night, he only has one, dr one drink in his hand that he hasn't drank him yet, and he's not even drunk. He tells the three old cowboy old timers about the future, and they think that he's drunk, but he's not. Marty comes into the saloon the next morning and he tells Doc Brown that he had to come back to the future with me. A little reference to the reference from the first film when Doc Brown came back to 1985 to bring Marty to the future. Marty tries to wake him up so that way he can prevent from getting shot by Buford Tanning. It's about Back to the Future Part 3. Before they used Clint Eastwood's name, they had to ask his permission first and he said yes. Ronald was offered the character of Mayor Hubert. If he played this character, it would have been his first film in 39 years. Because ironically, in the first movie, when 1955 Doc Brown asks his future Marty McFly, who was president in 1985, and his response is Ronald Reagan. Ronald Reagan loved the first Back to the Future so much, he kept rewinding that scene over and over again because of how funny it is, how... Whoever would have imagined and thought that in the history of the United States of America that an actor will become president. Shot back to back. Her claim was inspired from a real person in real life. 
Her name was Clara Clemens. She died in a sleigh riding accident a long time ago. It was written for Crispin Glover. But because he said no to coming back for the second Back to the Future film, and also because he sued Robert Zemeckis in the studio for using footage from the first film without his permission, Michael J. Fox ended up playing James McFly instead of Crispin Glover. In the early 90s, there was a Back to the Future animated show that only lasted for two years. Sandbergen's kids persuaded her to do the Back to the Future Part 3 because her kids were fans of the first two movies. A lot of money by shooting this film and the second film back to back by saving 10 15 million dollars. Brown and Clara Clayton's kids are named after famous author Jules Verne. One kid is named Jules and the other kid's name is Verne. This movie, Michael J. Fox's father died and his son was born at the same time. Review on Back to the Future Part 3. Like I said, I don't hate the film. I just don't really care for it as much as I used to when I was a kid. And it hasn't really, like, aged well or gotten any better for me because of all the, uh, cliches, the same format, and how Robert Zemeckis was just getting lazy and just really tired of Back to the Future at this point that he wanted to move on different projects. Like the video, hit the subscribe button and the notification button to get all my newest, latest videos on my YouTube channel. See you next time.